Ready? Here we go. Different points of view and highs and lows. A new perspective everywhere you go. Open up your mind, drown out the noise, and see if this connected. And see if this connected. What's up, fam? The mission of this connected podcast is to connect generations and situations about faith, life, and whatever comes along the way. To not necessarily agree, but be listened to. These conversations, of course, highlight the perspective of our various guests, and you are always welcome to agree or even disagree. But as always, we hope that it is done in charity. Now, here's your host, Catholic.Dad. So fam, <laughs> we have a special guest on this episode. It's Esme. I actually don't know your whole full name, but we invited you and you accepted um, to come on the show because you have a great story to tell. You have a great testimony to share. And I believe that what you're about to share with us today is going to resonate with so many people out there, some young ladies, some young men, mothers, fathers, families, grandmothers, about your life and and what you're about to share with us. And so thank you for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me, Arnell. It's definitely so, a blessing. so first, tell us, tell our fam who you are. Okay, well, my name is Esmeralda Torres, and I'm a parishioner of Saint Mary's, where I had the privilege to meet Arnell. And that's right. That's where we live, <laughs> Saint Mary's. Yes. <laughs> I've been a parishioner there for. 30 plus years. So. She's, yeah, she's aging us though. <laughs> yeah, 30 plus years at St. Yes. Mary's. That was yes. way before when we used to be having that little chapel on yes. Valley and Slover. Right. Um, on Slover and I believe Date Street. But wow, so you grew up completely at St. Mary's. Yes, since I was 11. So go on, keep us we telling won't do more. the math. <laughs> tell us more. Tell us, tell us about yourself. Tell us and then you can tell us about your story. Okay. So, I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. Um, I just have one sibling, my brother Alex, who is the best brother that God could have given me. He multiplies for like 10 <laughs> or more. Anyhow, but um, unfortunately, well, my parents, for a blessing, they immigrated or migrated here to the United States um, when I was three and our journey began here or, and they have been hardworking um, parents who have who had a very long journey but unfortunately my dad um, and my mother married very young they were teenagers well my dad was an adult but my mom was a teenager she was basically a little girl um, but that was the norm back in the day mm -hmm. so um, but my dad um, became or was a very he was an alcoholic as well as he was a cocaine addict wow. at, at a very young age um, and therefore um, my memories or my recollections before the age of 11 especially like five six was of him Unfortunately, um, hurting my mom, beating her up, there was a lot of violence, domestic violence, and I recall him asking me to make these, I was an expert at making these little, um, what would you call it, these paper wraps to put in his nose because his nose would bleed constantly mm -hmm. because of the, he had um, bursted so many um, nose vessels because of the cocaine addiction, cocaine which I didn't know. Um, with that being said, um, I won't get into detail, but it was a very dysfunctional home until um, my parents were blessed with um, coming, a com coming upon a couple that invited them to a marriage encounter, and um, that changed our lives. Wow. Um, my parents lived that weekend, and my dad, um, going back to 
um, to to our life. My dad would say five words or a sentence, and four of the five were bad words. My dad didn't know how to speak proper language without using foul language, and that's all I would hear. Um, when they lived this retreat, which, by the way, um, that's where we met, and we became a family um, with um, Manuel and Saro Yervides. May he rest in peace. My padrino. He was my sponsor. And um, that's where they met. And um, my dad came out literally a changed man. From that one retreat? That one retreat. He stopped um, the alcoholism. He stopped completely cocaine. And he stopped saying bad words all in one weekend. Um, obviously, that was the biggest blessing in our family in, in restoring my parents' marriage and our family, our home, but that didn't heal me. I was an 11-year-old with um, when my parents were very, they were in a honeymoon stage, um, knowing the Lord and changing their lives, but they kind of left us in the loophole because I wasn't healed from Mm -hmm. all that I had lived and seen, and all the trauma that I had from living in such a dysfunctional home. However, um, in God's grace, well, obviously he has, he has me here now, but um, I ended up um, galloping or running away with a, a young, well, he was an adult then, <laughs> um, and I was pregnant, um, wanting to live a home at 15, 16, 17, that I didn't have. And I had um, two children a week before I turned 18. And I still think the Lord managed to graduate with honors, graduate with honors and went on to college. But unfortunately that, um, that um, situation didn't work out. And may he rest in peace now. He, uh, my adult children's father um, has passed and we hope that he's in enjoying heaven now. Um, what I do want to say and maybe the, one of the reasons why I am here is because I know what it is to be in depression and I know what it is at 16 I um, attempted suicide twice. Um, and throughout then of course um, a lot of things have um, perspired in my life and I encountered unfortunately the depression knocked in my door four years ago um, because of a divorce of a marriage of 20 years and I'm here to testify of God's greatness that like Saint Father Peel would state I have adapted his logo into my life very seriously um, he would state pray hope and do not worry and when you pray, you encounter that hope, and you live a fulfilling life. Um, and I'm here to share that with you guys. <laughs> Thank you for sharing the beginning of your story. It's, 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 um, it's something I believe a lot of people undergo. Yes, it's something that a lot of people go through but never speak of. Yes, it's a taboo. Um, as a matter of fact, um, which I do want to share, especially with the youth and the parents, to be so careful out there. Um, when I was pregnant of my daughter, Jasmine, who is the only princess that I have out of my four children, um, I, I was very depressed because I had left the father. I had separated from the father of my children um, because... Um, I was living the same pattern of the household that I was in. He was using drugs. He would beat me. It was horrific, and I was still managed to be, quote unquote, a housewife, a mom, and go to high school, and good grade, get good grades because it was like school was like my sanctuary type of a deal. But anyhow, um, when I left him, my mom was very concerned, so she decided to take me to a therapist. And this lady, I pray for her soul now, or I don't know when, if she's still here, because um, I already had my son, Richard, who was three, well, was going to turn three, and 
she, when I told her that I had separated from this man, from my children's father, she told me, I have the solution for you. You need to have an abortion. And mind me, this was almost, uh, my daughter's 27, so almost 30 years ago. Um, and she, and I told her, no, I can't have an abortion because I'm a Catholic. I'm a Christian. I believe in God, and I already have a son. And she would, every time, I went to therapy for approximately three months, once a week for two hours. And it was literally like sitting down in the devil's den. That's how I see it. Because I would go in there, and she would give me every reason under the sun to have an abortion to the point that she would get very upset because I would cry and I would tell her it's just I don't know how to detach myself from this person and I want to live uh, I want to live a, a serving life to God I would tell her and she would tell me okay that's fine but you need to get rid of this baby that's going to be the biggest problem in your life and I would struggle with her, and I would give her every reason why I wanted to have my baby, but I couldn't tell my parents as of yet that I was pregnant again um, mm -hmm. at 17, right before turning 18. So um, that led me into a bigger depression because it was a fight with my soul and my mind because I know that the Holy Spirit was already um, inviting me to to love life, to give birth, to that Jasmine would be such a blessing in my life. She is. And um, it was a fight. It was literally a fight. And I want to invite all your all the parents, especially the moms, because most daughters or most young women go to their moms first. Mm -hmm. Or hopefully, you know, to tell them that they're pregnant or um, or when they're going through any type of depression, make sure that you do your homework and make sure that they are Christian-based because you don't know what your... I thought of committing suicide because I couldn't handle it. I, I, I would go home and she, my mom would tell me, it's okay, you're going to feel better, but I couldn't tell her that I was pregnant or I didn't want to tell her I was pregnant and that I was. she was taking me basically to a therapist, a licensed PhD therapist who wanted me to have an abortion because that was to her, that was the solution to my life at that moment. That was the easy answer that yes. most most people unfortunately out there will give to um, to a teen, an underage minor, the advice of uh, terminating the life that's within them. Yes, unfortunately. So what would you say to parents who, who their kids finally come up to them and say, hey, you know what, I, I'm having, I'm struggling with my mental issues, my depression, I feel depressed. Well, how do they find um, a, a good therapist? Because a lot of times, you know, the, the question always arises from your medical provider, are you depressed? And the kid says yes. And they don't have to, in, in today's laws, they don't have to tell the parents. Right. That is unfortunately correct. Um, I would definitely pray and fast and ask the Holy Spirit to guide to guide me as a parent on where um, the therapist that God has for my child. Mm -hmm. um, I thank God now for that opportunity because it has, um, it definitely bridged me to what I, after that experience, I always wanted to become a counselor or a therapist. And I am going back to school. Good for you. Um, because no, well, not, I can't say nobody, but it's, hard to find adults that want to work with teenagers nowadays mm -hmm. because they, they, they can be a handful, especially with all that the world offers them, unfortunately. That's also Christian-based. Yes, yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's important. Um, I always say is when you try to find a therapist, try to find someone that's Christian-based, especially if you have your Christian values that is that's correct. involved into that. Uh, now, knowing your story, how did you get out of that initial depression? Did the therapy help, actually, or did it not help? No, or what did it, you, did, it did what not help at all. Happening? It did not help at all. Um, in God's mercy, <laughs> he's always been so merciful to us, to me. Um, one day, we were driving to the swap meet, and I was feeling ill. I was already, like, four months pregnant, um, still early on 
in my pregnancy with my daughter Jasmine. And my mom had been fasting. My mom's a warrior. She's a, a woman of prayer. God has taken her on that journey of prayer. And she just turned around and she touched my stomach. And it was too early on, now that I've done my studies on pregnancy, Jasmine kicked. Mm -hmm. And my mom says, she said, that Jasmine must have said, Grandma, save me. <laughs> you know, they don't want to have me. And my mom told me, she turned around and she said, you're pregnant. And I said, I am. And she, and I said, and this lady wanted me to have an abortion where you were taking me. And that unfolded um, so many things. My mom started to cry and she told me that she was there for me, that she loved that baby regardless of what was going on, and that Jasmine would be one of the biggest blessings. Well, she would say, call her by her name. And I can tell you that it's been the most beautiful and the best decision that I have ever made in my life. Out of all the decisions that I have made in my life, Jasmine is the best decision that I have, that I have made. So that doesn't mean that, you know, I just want to tell people that uh, that doesn't mean just because you made that one decision that says, you know, I'm going to have this child, yes. that you lived happily ever after. Oh, no. <laughs> so what happened after that? So. Um, after that, I um, I still went back to, a week before I had her, I went back to living in sin at 17th with, well, um, with their father, and the beatings continued because he would promise me he would stop and I was living the same life that I was living as a child. You were or, used to it. Yes. And that and I was and ironically how the mind works, I used to think one day God's gonna do a miracle just like he did a miracle in my parents' lives. I'm gonna wait until I'm eighteen, I'm gonna get married through the church and I would tell him that I was gonna wait for him because I, I didn't want to live in sin because I knew and that I felt like I was going to live maybe a fairy tale marriage or life where God was going to convert this mm -hmm. man, my children's father, and then I was going to be able to serve God appropriately, go um, be able to um, to receive communion. Yeah. Um, I knew, I knew my parents were already walking in the Lord, but I had not had that conversion or that healing that I so needed. So is that thing that you prayed for, did that miracle happen? No. No. No, it didn't. So when did it end? How did it end? Um, and how did you move forward? When um, Jasmine was um, four months, um, no, seven, no, four months, no, seven months, I'm sorry, she got um, um, a respiratory virus where she was in the hospital for 18 days and she almost coded, she almost died three times. And um, that was a wake up call for me. That was really a wake up call for me and I decided that that wasn't the life that I wanted to live and that my children um, didn't deserve that life. And um, what I did is I recall, I call it a holy day. My mom said that she had been fasting for three days for me. Um, my parents didn't know completely the situation that I was living in. Mm -hmm. of the beatings. They, I'm sure they, they they had a slight idea, but they really didn't know. They couldn't. I never told them. Um, but they knew that I was not just living in sin, but that I was a teenager trying to live a marriage or a family that wasn't God's plan for me. Anyhow, I recall um, the night before um, he had beat me to the point where when I woke up, because he, I passed out, I was submerged in blood everywhere, and I, Jasmine was in her crib, and my little boy, Richard, who's now an adult, um, was, I couldn't find him in the apartment that we lived, and I found him shaking behind a laundry um, basket, and that was my turning point when I saw him, and he, could hardly speak and he hugged me and he told me does it hurt and he touched my mouth and I recall going to the living room um, and I kneeled in the living room and I told the Lord I want to change my life I'm gonna live for you I'm gonna change my life just give me the courage 
to be able to um, to do what I need to do. And I promise you, I'm going to live a Christian life. I'm going to surrender my life to you. Just help me not love this man anymore because I felt like he was everything to me. I was very in love with him even at that age. I thought I knew what was love. And I, I felt so much compassion for him. I wanted him to know of God. I wanted him to heal like my dad. I wanted, I didn't want my kids to be without their dad. But I felt at that moment that that was the best choice for them and for me. So I called my mom and um, she would always work, but that day she had not worked. And I called her and I said, Mom, I'm ready, come get me. And she was there and I just got my children's clothes, basic stuff. And she told me I have been fasting for three days and God has answered my prayers. And that began a different journey in my life. So Richard, Richard, your little baby, your prayers and your mom's fasting was answered through the heroic action of Richard, who came up to you. Yes, well, I he was behind the laundry yeah. basket. Yes. And I think if he wouldn't have said that to you, you would have continued because you were living your life in love with this man, and yet your love for your children, your act as a mother for protecting your children was so much more stronger. So that's why I say, I think you were saved by Richard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. God has done so many things in my life through my children. Well, moving fast forward, <laughs> there's in between, um, I started serving God I, I, at our parish, St. Mary's. Um, doing what I needed to do, um, healing, I, there was a lot of healing involved, and the Holy Spirit did what he needed to do, and I fell in love with Mother Mary through the rosary, and I know I that she has been part, a great part of my healing, and in my walk, in my journey with the Lord. So that we stop there. Okay. <laughs> so we stop there because that's part one of your life. Yes, I have. <laughs> and then and then you have this part two of your life, and we have this middle part where you just served. Yes. You served with your two children, staying with your mom and dad, who would had this miraculous thing that came over their relationship. Yes. The salvation through a retreat for your father who turned his life around. Yes. It's many miracles there. Yes. Your son Richard, you know, God performing a miracle through him, saving you from that relationship, and now you're happy. Yes. Single. Yes. With two children. Yes. However, I, I, my heart, or I longed having a marriage or a family. Mm -hmm. And I always felt very, um, because unfortunately, because of his addictions, may he now rest in peace, um, he was not involved in our children's lives. And actually, um, he got married a month after I, I left him. <laughs> and he, um, he, he was pregnant with his third child um, a month after. <laughs> So that was very hard for me to to overcome and to heal from. But I always wanted, I felt very um, guilty that even though I had saved my children in a sense from such a dysfunctional relationship or home, but at the same time I was guilty of not just putting myself in that situation, but also because now I, I felt at that moment or back in that time I felt that I had, I was guilty of leaving my children without their father. Yeah. And sometimes I would think, well, I think it would have been better if we were still together. At least my children would have a father and I wouldn't be this single mom. That's that generational <laughs> trauma that's setting yes. in, yes. in all of us yes. thinking that, yes. you know what, we need to stay together even though it's unhealthy for me, yes. but I want my children to have a father. Right, okay. right, right. 
So, but you got through that, and yes. you didn't get back with him, no. you eventually passed, and then part two sets in, you fall in love. I did. I started to, I would tell my mom that I would never remarry, and um, my mom would tell me that, yes, that I was going to marry one day, and that God had somebody for me. And I began to pray for a husband, um, but in between, I wasn't really looking to, I mean, I did date, but nothing serious because I, my walk with the Lord was more important than, you know. But this was, you were, you were still in your early 20s. Yes, yes. This is that time when, you know, young ladies are looking for that man and men are looking for that young woman. Yes. And, but you weren't looking. No, I, no, no. I was so traumatized, you could say. And I was so, um, I, I was working and going to college, um, that, and, and working, um, with the youth. I, I was a youth min, um, coordinator in St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. I did many things that I was involved. I was too busy <laughs> to want to date or I really to, my, my children were important, more important to me. So what happened? Because I really only know two of your kids. And it's not <laughs> yes. Richard and Jasmine. No, no. Um, so then I was serving in a retreat and I was giving a, a talk. Um, and at that retreat, quite a few um, young adults stayed in the ministry called Crecimientos. And um, we, would, um, we would prepare them for mm -hmm. future retreats. Um, there are our parish, and we would, um, I would talk to the young men and women that, and we became really good friends, and in that group was, um, or was, um, my now ex-husband, who I met and I dated for a year, and got married, and, um, throughout our 17 years together, um, living together, being married, we served. That's all we did. Mm -hmm. We served. We served and served. And I thought I was um, living my fairy tale um, um, calling yeah. of now being a married woman. Um, I felt beyond blessed and thankful um, for my marriage. Um, I can't get in, I won't get into detail. Um, what I will say is that unfortunately now, 20 years later, I do see, I understand why I married him and I understand why I shouldn't have married him because he was looking, he was not healed mm -hmm. and he was looking for the lack of love that he had in his home. I was looking or wanting a marriage that would honor God and that we would walk together. Um, I knew what a relationship was, not a marriage because I was not married, but what a relationship was. Um, unfortunately, um, throughout the marriage, I will s share, is that I did see signs of many things, but because I had I was living such a fairy tale where I wasn't getting physically or beat or certain things. I felt that that's how it had to be, and I was okay with forgiving certain big things. That oh, I'm glad I forgave him, but that that marriage should have never occurred, um, or what I thought was a marriage. Yeah. You painted your own vision of a marriage, and it was fitting in. Yes, at the moment, yes. And, and more so because I had, I felt, I felt happy that now I had given my two, Richard and Jasmine and my adult um, children, a, a stepfather, someone that would be there representing their father. Mm -hmm. And it was a good figure. relationship period of time. He was there. Yes. In, in a sense, yes. He was there. He wasn't physically abusive. He was serving with you. Yes. But yet there was something missing. And you're, you're willing to overlook those things that were missing because he was meeting certain needs. 
Yes, or we could say the basic, the basic needs ones. that I didn't have before and that I felt like, okay, well, I have to compromise somewhere. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not going to have a perfect husband, a perfect man. So, yes, I did compromise. And that marriage bore fruit? Yes, which I beyond thankful. I have Jose Giovanni and Joshua Yoari, who mm -hmm. are the boys that you know. <laughs> yeah. By the way, just a hint. I'm going to be his um, catechist for second year. <laughs> oh, nice. <Yeah. laughs> but anyway, so it bore fruit. Three yes. wonderful young men. Two. Two, two, two. wonderful young men. Because, um, you know, we call him Gio, call him Jose. Yes. Um, <laughs> who've both matured very well. Yes. And that's really beautiful fruit from that marriage. Yes. So doesn't mean that just because it wasn't perfect, it doesn't bear good fruit. That's correct. Because it did bear good fruit. Yes. But that is because of their upbringing, because you brought them up to serve the Lord. Yes. So, to know of our merciful God, yes. Yeah. To know Him, love Him, and serve Him. Yes. So, that's good. Yes, <laughs> it is. But your, your fairy tale marriage was a fairy tale. <laughs> was a fairy tale. <laughs> yes. And you came to that realization how and when? When we were, when it was going to be our 15 year anniversary, I started to tell him that um, I didn't want anything big or outrageous because I like parties and I like to gather with my family and with mm -hmm. Hispanics. So, All the um, dancing. Yes, yes, the food, the, <laughs> the interaction. Um, and he would tell me no. I told him, oh, because I told him, I would tell him that I just wanted um, the blessing from the Father. I wanted a Mass, you know, in, in Thanksgiving for our 15 year anniversary, our wedding anniversary, and he would say no. And that really, besides other big details that I cannot share um, that had occurred, it really like resonated and um, that really brought a lot of things to me. So for two years, I literally for two years would fast and pray because I knew something was wrong. And something, then, and then you found out. Yes. One day I, I said, Lord, today's the day. I got up in the morning and I would go to the Blessed Sacrament during my lunch or before, I would go either before work, at lunch or after work. And sometimes I would go all three times because that was the need that I felt. And mm -hmm. Only he was my comfort through all that I was going through. But you see, I have five sisters. I have a mother who went through pretty much similar things that you did. And it's almost like you were tortured for those two years to try to salvage something that salvaged that fairy tale. Yes. Yes, so, I was determined to be like Saint Monica. Yeah. To wait and to and and wait for a new miracle in my life. So was, was was your prayers answered to let go or did you let go? Both. Did you finally let go? Both. Both. So you came to acceptance? Yes. Well, what happened was, um, just going back to, because I don't want to put too much emphasis on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to share too much of that. But um, that, I call it a holy day. I got up and... I went to the Blessed Sacrament um, and I prayed with all my heart like I had done before and I had fasted for three days and I said, Lord, today's the day. I want to know what's going on. Like, I I want to know. Like, there has, something's wrong here with my marriage. Mm -hmm. um, so I called him and I, and, well, first I called um, my daughter and I told, please take your brothers to the park or take them somewhere. I need to be um, with him, I need. I have because we had never argued in seventeen years in front of our children, mm -hmm. or in front of my children, never once, not once. Um, and she took them, and I called him, and I said, um, you know, make sure to please go home. And he's like, yeah, I am home. And I'm like, okay. So I went and I got my Bible, and I opened it in Luke, where it tells us that the truth will set us free, and I 
read the passage and I told him that I knew that something was wrong with our marriage and that I loved him and that I was going to support him whatever it was whatever he what I was going to hear I was going to support him and that we were going to walk through it and he basically told me that unfortunately he had been living the lie for 17 years that he had prayed for 17 years to fall in love with me and to see me as his wife but that Unfortunately, he had made a big mistake that he married me, um, not loving me and not wanting a marriage, but that when he had met me, that he knew that I was a good woman and he didn't want to leave me at the altar. And that was the beginning of, oh. of, of a different journey in my life. That's, that's so hurtful. Yes. To, to hear. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, um... I actually wanted to commit suicide that day. I, God works in um, so many ways. Um, after talking to him for a long time, he, he would just confirm, you know, I, I don't know how to explain to you. I'm so sorry, but I've been living a lie, and that's why... Um, you know, I didn't want to have children, this, that, I, I, I've honored you by not, by being here, but I don't love you and I don't want this marriage. It was never a marriage for me. And you didn't believe it? I mean, no, how, I didn't. How could you? I mean, uh, <laughs> I couldn't. Like, how can you believe I that? Can, I couldn't, <laughs> yes. So, of course, the first thing that I did is I seeked help, um, spiritual guidance. I went with our pastor and... Moving fast forward, um, I'm not going to get into detail, yeah. but um, that started a long journey where I, again, was faced with such a such a big decision in my life of what God wanted me to do or what I was supposed to do. So um, I started going to therapy. I went to, um, well, moving fast forward, um, four months, less than four months after finding the cell, he, um, he said he wasn't going to change in the sense of his decision. Mm -hmm. um, so he packed his stuff and left. And I was now faced with um, four children. Oh, yeah. and Just got up. Okay. Packed and his stuff. Left. And he said he was sorry for ruining And never life. looked back? No. But the kids just walked off? Yes. Well, he did tell them like a week before that he was sorry that when people meet and they fall in love, then the next step is they get married. But he had never, he liked me physically and he knew I was a good woman, but he had never got to that third step, which was falling in love with me. And he told our boys that he was living a lie and he needed to stop living that lie. And he okay, my, my mind is just blown away. <laughs> um, how, how, how do you continue from there with your two boys? You know, never mind, you know, the other two because now they're grown up as adults, but these two were in their most formative years. Oh, yes. And it was the week before, um, um, it was the summer before. Jose Giovanni started high school, and from getting straight A's, he was getting complete F's. Understandable. Oh yes. <laughs> Very much understandable. Yes. How how did you deal with that? I honestly don't even know how I got through it. Well, I do know how I got through it: prayer, fasting, praying the rosary, and reading good my therapy. Bible. Oh yes, I ended up go yes. <laughs> Yes. Not the same therapist that oh, would tell no. you to get an abortion. Thank the Lord. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Because you're an yes. adult now and you yes. knew yes. who to look for. Yes. I Was it a Christian therapist? Well, at first I started, I seek therapy at work mm -hmm. because we have therapists. And they were very good therapists, but not Christian based. I actually had one, that's so why we have to be very careful. And we have to stand up for our rights as Christians, as people. Amen. That when you are not getting the help or the guidance that you need, then you need to pray and move forward and keep looking. I, one of the therapists told me that, what was the big deal? 
-hmm. that I could, that people got divorced every day. And that what was the big deal? Why would I just go in there and cry? And that I just needed to move forward and then eventually I would just get married and, and again and that would be in my past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Yes. That, that, that the, the lack of understanding that you've actually uh, experienced and continue to experience loss. Yes. It's a death. Yes. And yes. it's like, get over it. You know, yes. someone has died, your heart is broken, get over it and move on. Yes. Find somebody else. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. 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 So a lack of understanding of what our faith is, um, it's, it's difficult to understand. Um, it's difficult to hear, but that's... That is the story that people get when they yes, when they are sent unfortunately. to therapists. And, and with each deception, we could say of not finding the correct help or compassion when someone is going through such things because um, they wouldn't even bridge they didn't bridge the 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 trust for me to tell them that there were days that I would dwell mm -hmm. of how I would. Um, how I would commit suicide, and how, and I would think of the notes that I would leave my children, and I would pray and ask God to forgive me for just even the thought um, of that, and I would think, well, I'm just going to go to the mountains and just let the car go, you know, it can't be possible that I'm here in my life at this age with my children, and I or I thought I was doing things right and I was living a lie. I, now I understand um, through healing, of course, and prayer that, of course, God had, in His great mercy, He had, He had to purpose for it. And that's why I'm going to go back to school, um, which has always been in my bucket list. Um, because I want to be of a blessing to those that are going through so many difficult things or changes or in their lives. And I want to be that hope that there is only in God. Mm -hmm. Only in God. And yes, through understanding to be that, that shoulder, being that ear for someone that is in despair, literally in despair, because that's how I felt. Yeah. And I can't thank God for the family that I have, the support group. My mom, <laughs> that woman has been on her knees and praying the rosary, and my dad and offering, uh, being at the Blessed Sacrament and offering masses. <laughs> it's been yeah. a journey. And, and and so you had a good support group to get you yes, through those. Yes, yes. Because you yes. wouldn't have been able to do it by yourself. No, no. My brother and my mom constantly. My dad's always been more quiet, but my dad would be in mass every day. Yeah. He wouldn't call me, but my brother and my mom would call me multiple times during the day just mm -hmm. to ask me how I was doing and to tell me that they loved me and that they were here and that anything I needed and... My mom would just call me sometimes in the middle of the night just to pray for me or to tell me, you know, I can't sleep. Are you okay? God's telling me to tell you how special you are. Do not give up. And mm -hmm. it was moments where I was just in my bed thinking of how yeah. I was not going to, how I was going to end my yeah. life. So they were there for you. And, and, yes. And fam, for you guys who don't understand what offering a Mass is, uh, the wonderful thing about our faith is when you offer a Mass, it doesn't mean that just I pray for you. That means the entire church yes. prays for you. And so those intercessory prayers, that means billions of Catholics, of faithful, are praying for you. And they're storming heaven because you've Amen. offered up the Mass for you. And so that's what's so important about offering a Mass, a Mass intention, yes. is especially for those periods of, of desolation. Yes. Is, is offering up a Mass and praying on your own and asking all the saints in heaven to also pray for you because, you know, deliverance comes from that. Yes. And one of the most important things that you just said, and I heard you, is that they didn't just pray, they called you. Yes, the pr prayer takes prayer takes us to action, and that's what I want to do. That's right. And that's very important also, fam, to learn from, is prayer leads to action. Yes. And then action 
is answered. You know, that leads to prayers being answered. And so that's why a lot of us continually reach out to other people and say simply, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Would you like me to call you or would you like me to take you somewhere? Uh, because it's important. Because that's, a, that's another body of Christ. That's another part of the body yes. of Christ reaching out to be a healing tool for the Lord. So, we moved on from part two. <laughs> yes, so many parts. We moved on from part two. And now part three is, where is Esme now? Esme is living the best moments of her life. I love your Instagram, by the way. <laughs> I'm living my best version yeah. of my best life. Best version. My best version. <laughs> what is that? Um, best, be best version of Esme is Esme's best version. Es Esme's best version. Esme's best version. version. Yes. And so we, we go through that. We go through stages in life. Yes. And we learn from each stage. Yes. And so just like purgatory, we are there to be purified. And you are Definitely. your <laughs> most highest part here of living the best version of yourself. Yes. To serve the Lord. So what now? Okay, well, I have asked the Lord since I can recall. I want to be a saint. I, I, I ask Him for the sanctity that we are all called to be. And I'm not talking of a recognized saint of our church, but mm -hmm. me, Esme, living like, um, like Pope Francis once said that... Um, that God wants us to be saints in jeans and heels, and I want to be that saint in heels. <laughs> I love in to hot pink yes. and heels, matching heels. Yes, I'm actually not. I'm wearing them today. Yeah, <laughs> she's wearing a hot pink with matching high heels on. Uh, <laughs> living the best version, the, the patron saint of pink. You know, or, or as Catholics, we wouldn't say pink, it is rose. Yes. So, so every day is 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 basically rose for you. <laughs> yes, I'm living. So, moving fast forward, um, I have definitely healed. I know I have healed um, from that experience, which I thank God every day, because He has taken my words very seriously. And sometimes I laugh and I tell Him, "You take it so serious." <laughs> You're funny, Lord, because um, over a little over a year ago, unfortunately, well, no, it's been a blessing. My mom was diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. and she has had four surgeries. And being that it's just my brother and myself, I have taken more of the caregiv caregiving to take care of her because my brother works third shift. Mm -hmm. graveyard shift and he has a family but he's there as well but I have been through this journey with my mom and seeing her suffer has been very hard for me because she is the best mom that God could have gave, given me and has given me and blessed me with um, and one day I was I wanted to share I, I don't want this to go um, when we are connected to God and we God talks to us in so many different ways. I was driving, and I was actually driving home very late from the hospital, one of the days that I couldn't stay with her um, in L.A. Um, from her surgery. I think it was her third surgery, or second surgery, um, to be exact. Um, I was driving, and I did not hear verbally or physically, but I heard it in my heart, um, these words that state, whatever it is to happen to me as long as it's for as long as it's for my conversion, my salvation, and for gl greater glory of God, let it be in my life. I don't. I can tell you that that is the new theme that I will carry, mm -hmm. inspired by the Holy Spirit in my life, and I am going to live by those words. And um, God was already preparing me because um, I was diagnosed with cancer. Wait, wait, wait. Your mother was diagnosed with cancer. <laughs> and she battled stage. it for stage. It, but she battled it? Yes, and she's and still, she's in remission. And we don't know right now if she still has cancer. But. Okay. So she was battling cancer, and, and then she got her surgeries, mm -hmm. 
And then you ended up with cancer? Yes. When? <laughs> yes, in April. So just this year? Yes. So you found out this year? Yes, right before her last surgery. Yes. And you're laughing and wearing pink and pink high heels? <laughs> yes. How can you be so happy when you're given this cross of cancer, that big letter C, cancer, and you're like... Because, just like St. Paul, if I am going to live or I'm going to die, it's going to be for God. And I am so happy. I am very thankful. What I did the day that I got the news is I thank them. And I thank them every day for thank the you cancer. For the cross. Yes. Wow. Yes. Because if it's going to sanctify me like I have asked them to, if it's going to make me a better person, a more person of compassion, and really serve him. And I tell him, you're funny, Lord, because I have asked you for sanity. So the sanctity, so what he's doing now is he is, he is within, even from my flesh, like St. Joe. St. Hope, and you know what, I'm going to share something, um, not ironically, but as a testimony. The night before, I was reading in, in Hope um, chapter 2 where it says where his wife is telling him to curse God because all that had happened to him, he has lost his his children, his finances, and now his, his health. Mm -hmm. Well, she tells him to, um, to curse God, and he tells her, his wife, you know, if I am going to accept the good that God has given us, why would we not accept the bad? I don't know how it goes in Spanish, yeah. because in English, because I read it in Spanish. Yeah. But um, when the doctor told me, I already knew, actually. I was like, thank you, Lord. This is going to sanctify me like St. Hope. And if I am going to accept all the blessings and all the good that comes, then I am going to accept all the... All the, all the I don't even... I don't even call it a curse. I it's having this cancer is the biggest blessing of my life too. Wow. Yes. Yes. See, see that that is amazing. <laughs> yes. And I'm I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous because uh, you know I see so much energy from you, and and I'm, I'm not just saying, happy. I'm, I'm not I can honestly say I'm in, living yeah. the best version of my life, even with this cancer. I I am happy. I. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying energy as in the same energy you have people overuse energy. I'm yes. using energy as so much of the Holy Spirit <laughs> is dwelling in you that you are bursting with joy. I am. That I've is, never been yeah. happier in my life. And that, that, never. Is, that is beautiful because that is what we're seeing here. In the bright colors, in your vibrant um, testimony here, in the way that you speak, the, your huge smile, and even when you're <laughs> dancing, that is the joy of the Holy Spirit. That is the fruit of the gifts that you've been giving and you're bearing fruit. And you're accepting that cross of cancer yes. to be a witness to other yes. people. That yes. is amazing. Yes. What a gift. I I I just ask the Lord every day to to allow me to carry my cross with humble tea, perseverance, strength, but overall love. Wow. That's all I ask. So I wanted to ask this because I actually sure, wrote it course. down. <laughs> what did you wish that you would have known before all of this that you could have changed? What's one thing that you wish you would have you would have changed? Probably probably to be more that I would have changed probably to have been more in love with the Eucharist with God I don't know I and our Blessed Mother Mary she is I am so in love with her she she has manifested um, in that vocation of um, Blessed um, Blessed Mother of Fatima that I I just I, I, I don't know what I would change, but I think I would have been more at the Blessed Sacrament. Amen. And then That's my problem. Another question I wanted to ask is, <laughs> sure. where, where do you feel you have failed? I have failed in being obedient with the Lord. With the Lord, because you've been obedient to everybody else. Yes. 
Yes. Because I was looking, I understand that now. Mm -hmm. I was looking, I, I, I was a people pleaser because I wanted to receive that love that I gave everybody. I was a caregiver. I have learned so much of myself in these last four years been <laughs> all my entire life. And I love myself in such a manner where I appreciate the woman that God has created in me. I, I can't be more thankful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's wisdom in the things that people say to us, such as advice that comes from, from leaders that we yes. don't want to accept at the moment because we're being stubborn, because we're fighting for something that we desire. Yes, my heart than... desired a home, a, a Christian home. Um, and now I understand that I do have it. Amen. And that I I'm going to build it with my children. I love that answer, to be obedient. You know, because I think that's where a lot of us fail. Oh, yeah, that's where the original sin came from. <laughs> it's the lack of obedience. Oh, yes. You know, and they say, what's the, opposite of, what's the opposite of sin? The opposite of sin is obey. Yes, obedience. Yeah, so to be obedient, that's a beautiful answer. Now, you've gone through this. You know, what, what would you recommend for someone who, at these stages in their lives, let's begin with, high school age when you first got pregnant and you were in this relationship what's a recommendation or resource that you would give to someone at that age our listeners who are in the high school young adult group what would you say to them to learn from what you did what happened to you so that maybe it won't happen to them to be more open to to the help to be more open to the help and to fight against yourself to look for that help. To look for that help. To go to your church, to go to your pastors, to look for the adults that um, that love life, that that are pro um, life. That there are so m our church is so beautiful and it offers so much help and so much so many resources. But when we're in that despair or we come across it. I do want to, I, I don't want to leave without mm -hmm. sharing a testimony that how things change or um, my daughter a few years ago, um, she had a really good friend um, who um, one day when I was getting ready to work, go to work, she told me crying that she needed to talk to me and I felt like Somebody punched me in my stomach because I thought she was going to tell me she was pregnant, which <laughs> I, I was going to be happy anyhow, right? But um, she said she had something very delicate to talk to me about, and I said, okay. And um, she said that, she's like, Mom, she's like, I'm sorry that I put you in this situation. And I said, what do you mean? And she's like, it's because I told her that you'll keep the baby and that we'll adopt, you'll adopt it. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, uh, she gave me the name of her friend who I knew. For many years she's like she's pregnant but she said don't have an abortion my mom if you don't want the baby my mom will keep the baby we'll raise the baby we my mom I you don't even have to tell my mom twice she will keep the baby like you don't have an abortion and um, she's like but I talked to her all morning mom she's like I haven't even slept I've been convincing her to if she doesn't want to have the baby well, at least give it up for abortion, but not to have an... Uh, give it up for adoption. Adoption. And I gave her the testimony of when you were pregnant with me, of how you struggled to to keep me. You know, you had that struggle of even th of the thought of even having an abortion and all that you went through. And days later, I kept asking, you know, what happened? Can I go talk to her? And she would say, no, let me keep talking to her. And you know, she's not supposed to know that you know, and I said, okay, so I kept fasting and praying for this young lady, and for the glory of God, the little boy is walking around now. Um, she kept the baby. She did. Yeah, she allowed she life to exist. Yes, but through the situation, that's why there's a purpose for everything. I solemnly now have, without a shadow of a doubt, in my heart, in my soul, in my life, that God has a perfect purpose for everything. He tells us in Romans 8 that he does everything for the good of those that love him. Mm -hmm. And when we, even in the midst of sin or he changes things when he knows our heart, our intent, and 
he knew that I was struggling with with the thought of an abortion when I was pregnant with Jasmine at that age because of the circumstance that I was living not, not that it, it gives it a, a, a valid a validation or reason but he knew in my heart that I wanted to please him and that at the same time I wanted to have this baby but I didn't know how I was going to do this like go on a journey of having a, a second child two weeks before I, I turned 18 mm -hmm. but I didn't know that so many years later that same struggle my own daughter was going to be a vessel of life mm -hmm. for someone else. See, that is the gift. Yes. <laughs> and that is the miracle that is performed not at that moment but years later miracles happen and if you didn't have that another life would have been lost or yes. many lives would have been yes. lost. We touch people's souls every single moment of our lives if we're open to being obedient yes. to the Lord. Um, so I know that you're doing something right now. So what group are you part of that you want to tell us about? <laughs> the Lord, I had, I, have been, I had been praying for the Lord to put me where He needed me or where I could be of some, uh, some type of blessing where I could grow, where I could serve Him. And I am currently in a ministry called Somos Incorruptos. It's, uh, it's bilingual. But it's predominantly Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. um, young adults with different stages in life. And I felt like I wasn't going to fit in. or, But God has is doing so many things in my life where I thought I was going to be a blessing to them or to serve Him. And it's the other way around, like always. <laughs> <laughs> They've been a blessing. Yes, they are. They continue so, so to be So tell, tell us how the, they can reach them. Um, we have, there's an IEG account, an Instagram account, Somos Incorruptos. Somos Incorruptos. Somos, S-O-M-O-S, Incorruptos, I-N-C-O-R-R-U-P-T-O-S. We're going to put that in the, in, in the, <laughs> in the podcast so you guys okay. can look for it. We're going to, yes. we're going to tag Somos Incorruptos. So tell us more about, about Somos Incorruptos. Well, we're, um, we're doing different things. There's a lot of vlogging, a lot of blogging. Um, this month, um, we are going to um, do an event in regards to depression and suicide. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot, a lot of projects that God has for us, yeah. and I am beyond grateful and blessed to be part of it. That's beautiful. And I'm just, I, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> So that's that's so wonderful that that you you know in in, in del being delivered from all these things you still find places to serve. Yes, yes. Our our church is so immense. It's, yeah. I mean, yes. It's like I always tell in class. I always tell students. You know, who made you? God made me, and why did He make you? He made me to know Him, to love Him, and to serve Him in this world, so that you can be forever with Him in the next, which is heaven. <laughs> and so that's that's beautiful because that's that that is how we want to be when we want to become saints. Yes. We want to go home, and if you want to go home, you have to become a saint. You know, yes. there's no such thing as becoming an angel. I'm going to tell you Catholics now, we don't become <laughs> angels. We become saints. So stop, take off those wings. We don't get wings. We get halos. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> And that is, that is our drive, is to become a saint. That is the purpose yes. of living, is to live like a saint so that you can be a saint in heaven. A happy saint. A happy saint. A well, happy there, I don't saint. think there's any sad saints out there. I think when you're in <laughs> yes. heaven and you're in the glory of God. No, but I'm talking about here. Our oh, here. Our yes. starts with being happy, and I have adapted yeah. um, St. Father Peel's yeah. Pray, Hope, and Do Not Worry, and just live a fulfilling life to bridge others to that hope. For His greater glory. Amen. Yes. AMDG. For His <laughs> greater glory. Amen. Yes. So, wow. That's a lot. <laughs> I know, right? That's a lot. And you're not done yet. Because, oh, no. No, 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 no. Because you still have Joshua and you still have, uh, you know, Gio. To, yes. Who are, you know, Gio's going into the military. Yes. You know, we're Next praying time. for him. Yes. And okay, Joshua is still in high school. Yes. So you have one kid left. Yes. <laughs> and and you're still serving more. 
Yes, I have a lot to do. God so, has a lot to do. Yeah, but never, never rest. There's no, never no, 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 rest no. for no, those no, no, who no. want to serve the no, Lord. No, no. You know, once you know, rest is in heaven. Yes, that's what our uh, I know she is in the arms of our blessed father. Um, there was a a really good friend, a, a mutual friend of ours, mm -hmm. Evelyn. Oh. And she would always tell me that she was always praying for me and that how much she loved me and she loved my smile and she would always I would always tell her you work so much. And she would say, I'm going to rest when I'm in heaven. Yeah. She is resting on heaven. She and I, and I, I know she is. <laughs> That's a shout out to Evelyn Parale. Yes. Uh, pray for us because we know we have the faith to believe that you are in heaven. She is. Looking down on us. Yeah. Still yes. trying to build that church. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that's a shout. <laughs> she would be laughing because we're still we're still trying to build that church that you guys have been trying to build since the you know the 1980s on the <laughs> old site on Slover, that is uh, and and we're still trying. We're still trying hard. We're almost there. Um, if, uh, we we need a couple of more million dollars and just and a few. <laughs> just a few. You know, the price keeps going up. Yes. Meet yes. the mark, and then they raise the price, and we have yes, to keep yes. raising it. So here's to the faithful to to get it there. But as many have anything else that you'd like to share? Yes, I want to encourage. No, I don't want to encourage. I want to invite everyone to open your mind and your heart to God. Wherever you're at, you don't have to have eloquent words. You don't. You just have to open your heart to God and tell Him, "I'm here. This is what I need." And not just what we need at a particular emergency moment, but this is what I need. I need you. And every day God will start showing you the way. He is the way. And he will put people in your lives. And I know that Arnell is here. I am here. Um, you could look for me. I doesn't matter what time. Please, if you need someone to talk to, someone to hear you out, I have been there. And for the most part, I have done that. <laughs> um, look for the help. Um, do not stay with those feelings of not wanting to live, of feeling that God doesn't understand you, that He doesn't care what you're going through, or in the situations we put ourselves most of the time in. He does. He does. And he... I pray that he continues to put people in my life, in my life that are in need of him, that are in need of a someone to hear them out. That's... I feel that's part of my calling now. I, I, I ask the Lord to give me a compassionate heart, a listening ear and a shoulder and a hand to hold those that that hurt life and that need that love that our world is so much lacking. Thank you for all of that. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for being so open and and thank you for <laughs> being so vulnerable. You know, it's difficult to share testimonies. It's difficult to share, you know, where we've failed and where we've yes. gone. <laughs> well, but I do believe <laughs> that when people hear stories like ours and stories definitely of yours, that people learn from the mistakes of others. And people definitely learn from the successes, the miracles yes. that people experience. Yes, that's, and yes. so we need I would to do not, it all again. <laughs> and so we need not dwell on yes. the mistakes that we make. We, do, we should dwell on the deliverance that God provides to us and live out a life of joy. Yes. And that's what you're doing. <laughs> you're being joy-filled, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit and, and, and bearing such good fruit. I want to thank you for honoring us with, with what you've shared. And I ask you, fam, who are listening to this, to to really place it into your heart, the story 
the testimony that she shared, the truth of her life of deliverance. That's literally, I think that's what we're going to call this episode, <laughs> is deliverance. You've been delivered so many times. Oh, yes. And, and continually, you will continue to be delivered. Amen, yes. Because yes, until because we are God delivered into yes. heaven, yes. we continually fight in our, the militant church. To yes. continue <laughs> to fight the good fight and to be joyful saints here yes, on earth. Yes, 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 with heels. With heels, <laughs> except for me. Not, no heels for me. Sorry, yes, folks. Pink heels. You, you will not see Catholic.dad with pink heels. Well, maybe for a fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, Pam, um, we have a couple of announcements. Um, follow us on Instagram. Follow Esme on Instagram. Also for Somos Incorruptos. Yes. Follow them Shout on Instagram. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> so we're going to put them on our our um, details in the, in the podcast so you guys can click on it so you guys can follow them. We also want you guys to go check out our producer Tony's newest show on YouTube that just launched. So follow him on Tony Pimentel. The show is a brief talk show style with Catholic emphasis. And they're short 10 minutes, not like this long t show that we have. <laughs> so short for you guys who have like short memory spans. Uh, it's good. Um, I'm sure you will learn a lot from the various topics he's going to cover. So check out on YouTube, Tony Pimentel. You can also catch him on Instagram, at Mini Tangled. We also want you to support our podcast listeners who own those Catholic small businesses, like Jose Valdez of the Valdez Group, a realtor in California at Town & Country Real Estate. We also uh, want to give a shout-out and you guys to support Isabel Vickery, who is the proprietress of the Cabin 2021. That's a cabin in the mountains of Running Springs in the San Bernardino Mountains. Check it out. Reserve a date to go there. I think they're fully booked this month, so try to get it as soon as possible. Beautiful location. Um, but, fam, that's all we have for you today. I pray what we shared here today connected with you. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to catholic.dad50 at gmail.com. Make sure to like, share our podcast to your friends, and consider subscribing to get notified of the latest episodes we release. I'm also asking you to support our show by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash this connected it's all in our bio so go check it out and as always remember fam live a life of holiness we'll be praying for you please pray for us and as always be blessed and be third different points of view and highs and lows a new perspective everywhere you go open up your mind and drown with the noise of different generations of the girls and boys so sit back and relax this cat the podcast don't overreact if the thoughts are abstract when it's hosted by catholic doc dad who knows what's gonna happen hey what's up fam different points of view and highs and lows a new perspective everywhere you go open up your mind and drown with the noise and see if this connected. What's up, fam? To connect generations and situations about faith, life, and whatever comes along. Best back, runaway thoughts like a runaway train. Break into conversation like links of a chain. Make a Hail Mary pass, hope this connects. Have a question for a guest, put it to rest. Live a life of holiness, lead by example. Follow at Catholic.dead and many tangled. <laughs> Christ leads our way, he's the good shepherd. Pray for one another, be blessed, and be there. Different points of view, and highs and lows. A new perspective everywhere you go. Open up your mind and drown with the noise. And see if this connected. See you in the next episode. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. That was quick, huh? <laughs> <laughs> make sure I, let me make sure I turn everything off. Oh my goodness. I didn't, first of all, I didn't even know I was going to go there. <laughs> You're like, I didn't think we were going to start yet. <laughs>